episode number 179 of the Wholesome Fertility Podcast. Welcome to the Wholesome Fertility Podcast. I'm Michelle, a fertility acupuncturist here to provide you with resources on how to create a wholesome approach to your fertility journey. My guest today is Zita West. Zita is a leading fertility and pregnancy expert. She's a practicing midwife, acupuncturist, nutritional advisor, and author of 10 fertility and pregnancy books. She's acknowledged as one of Europe's leading experts on how we can improve our prospects at each key stage of the reproductive process through natural means or, if necessary, through medical intervention. Zita has been involved in fertility now over 30 years, and over that time, thousands of couples have come to her for advice on how to get an optimum shape physiologically, nutritionally, and emotionally for all the vital stages of childhood, from preconception to conception, pregnancy, and the months immediately after birth. So welcome to the podcast, Zita. Thank you for having me. It is such a pleasure and an honor to have you. You have really contributed so much to the fertility community, to women's health, and I'm really, really excited to have a conversation with you. And I'd love for you to share your background. I know you have a really huge background and a wealth of information. So I'm really excited to have you introduce yourself. Okay. Well, I am um, a midwife. I've been a midwife for over 40 years now. Um, and as a result of getting postnatal depression when I had my second child, who's 34, that's when I started to look at complementary um, therapies and it led me to acupuncture. So I trained as an acupuncturist and it I brought it into the National Health Service um, over here. Um, and yeah, then I went on to set up a clinic and I've written books um, and I've got a range of products. So it's been one thing after another over the last sort of 20 or 30 years, but all good. Yeah, all good. And I'll tell you, I love the fact that you have a clinic that is really all encompassing. Um, yes. So, so yeah. share about that because um, you don't see that often. No, I, I, I think that like for me, when I set up my first clinic, it was about trying naturally. And I was seeing more and more women that were going down a, an IVF route. And it's probably the same in the States as it is here. There's a mm -hmm. big divide between evidence-based medicine and acupuncture and, you know, all of these things. Um, and I think that, it, that the tide is changing. I think doctors yes. are starting to believe more now um, in it. And um, I wanted women that were going through IVF to be able to have a holistic approach, which was 10 years ago, non-existent, really. You know, yeah. they would go to their doctors and they were saying, oh, I'm having acupuncture. And it would be like, well, there's no evidence to suggest that works. Or I'm doing diet and nutrition. And the answer would be, well, you know, nutrition doesn't affect anything, you know. Mm -hmm. And women are very intuitive. They know what they want. They want to be yes. proactive. They want to be in control of their situation. So my idea for the IVF clinic, uh, you know, along with a team that helped me set it up, was to be able to offer that holistic care, so much so that we offer nutrition as a part of our package. So there's no charge for nutrition because we want everyone to get the right lifestyle and nutritional and supplement advice. I love that. It makes me so excited because it's true. It really makes such a huge difference. It really makes such a difference in the body. People really do respond. And I think yes. that you're right. A lot of people are starting, a lot of doctors I know even in my area are starting to become a lot more open to alternative medicine. Yeah, yeah. Because, natural. you know, at the end of the day, you've got evidence, which is really important, and I'm very based in evidence-based medicine, but you've also got women in front of you that are going through a really, really tough time, and it's very, very challenging. And, you know, no matter whether you believe in acupuncture or not, the support that a lot of acupuncturists, hypnotherapists, nutritionists give to women and couples going through is, well, it's immeasurable. You can't measure it. Yeah. But, you know, you know that their sense of well-being is is good. They feel a lot better supported as a result. And typically, I do get a range. I, I get some people that come in months before 
planning yeah. their IVF. And then sometimes it's kind of like a month before. So typically how, what's your recommendation? How much earlier should people start with alternative medicine, acupuncture and diet before starting their treatments? Yeah, well, we, uh, you know, w w when women are going for IVF, we prepare them four to six weeks ahead of time. If they can have acupuncture longer than that, well, that's great because the studies show, it, you know, it, it should be at least three months. Um, but not everybody can afford to do that. Um, yeah. If you're working and you're in a stress job and finances are, are key, it's difficult. So, you know, we like to start it before they start an IVF cycle. Then we will do acupuncture when they're going through their pro uh, their protocol during stimulation. Then usually on the day of transfer, um, and then that's that's generally it. But they will have had nutrition in the lead up. Um, we offer free counselling sessions so they can have oh, counselling. And I work very much um, with the with the mindset. I've just set something up called Hug, which is heart, uterus, and gut, and it's based on um, neuroscience and ancient Chinese wisdom. Oh, that's awesome! So, talk to us. I, I love hearing the evidence and the you know some of the science behind things that have been taught for so long. You know, like ancient yes. medicine, and I would love to hear about that. Well, it's, it's quite interesting because, you know, uh, uh, one of the questions I always ask a woman when she comes into a clinic, is there anything that you think is stopping this from happening for you? And women don't have to dig too deep. You know, it's on the surface. And the answers I often get is I've had a termination in the past. I've got low self-esteem. Mm -hmm. I've had some sort of violation or abuse, mental, physical, sexual. Um, I'm overwhelmed. Wait, uh, I never thought it was going to happen for me. And some of that plays out um, in your life. And I think, you know, when you start to try for a baby, your self beliefs are really important. So your past, your present, and your future is in your head when you come in. Mm -hmm. And for many women, they've had quite traumatic pasts or very difficult relationships with family. Um, and I think that all feeds into when you are trying to um, trying to have a baby. So um, one of the my bugbears in the UK is the way we medically label women. You know, so we talk yes, about women 100%. being percent low responders and poor amh geriatric eggs um what else are the sayings um I don't, I, I don't know michelle you know but it goes oh failure ivf failure yeah and it goes on and on and on so there's a constant story that women start to tell themselves about mm -hmm. their situation oh i'm a poor responder or i'm first and this that and the other um, and so with how i've merged the chinese medicine and and hug is that in Chinese medicine, as you know, the heart is the emperor. It's the seat of the body. It's the controller. If your heart's out of sync, it puts you into a panic. And very often in, in Chinese medicine, the heart is about holding your spirit. It's about um, holding memories. It's um, all about sort of, you know, being the emperor, being in control of the, of the whole body. And and when you're not connected to your heart and you're not you're disconnected from er everything so another question i always ask a woman is how do you, how do you feel about your heart how did your heart feel today and very often it's like it's heavy it's broken mm. um it's gray you know they describe it to me and the beauty about doing the work i'm doing with um neuroscience it's based on mbit training by Grant Sulisu, um, is that it's not just a physical pump. You know, your heart is like your brain. It has neurons. You can rewire it. You can yes. retrain it. And when you start to meditate and do visualization, you think of somebody that you love, your heart releases oxytocin. It makes you feel better. Mm. And, you know, your, your body's always telling you, always having a conversation with you. But so many women are disconnected. They're not listening to what's going on in their mind and their body. And I don't know, Michelle, what it's like in the States, but certainly over here, women have gone on the pill for 10 years. They come yep. off when they're 35. Yeah. They have no idea about their fertility, their periods, and they're looking outside for answers the whole time when you need to be able to train to look within. I totally agree. I couldn't agree more. And it's true. And I think it's it's a conditioning of sorts. And I think it's a modern day conditioning that we really have 
been detached from our bodies and what our bodies are telling us. And they're always communicating. And I find that it's almost like once people retrain themselves or kind of go back and remember, it starts yeah. to speak to them more and more. They start to understand the communi communication because it is so innate. We're meant to understand our body's communication. We're meant to connect with it. It's yeah, part of our and, design. You know, the thing is, if it, the brain is, a, you know, is an intelligent, the heart is an intelligence, the gut yeah. is an intelligence. And what I loved about marrying this up with Chinese medicine is the heart is about love and compassion. Right. The head is about making meaning. The gut is about courage and self-belief. And I know you do a lot of womb wellness, um, but the womb or the uterus isn't just about making a baby. It's about being creative on every level right. and so many women lose their fertility on every level when they're trying for a baby yeah. they're no longer creative they are they're, they're fearful uh, suffering these strong emotions so yeah. they're constantly in a mode of fear and protection so the creativity is stagnant they're stuck and I also find that this is what I hear really from my patients is that when they go to the doctor they come back feeling almost like their spirit has been yeah. dropped down Crushed. a couple of notches. Yeah. yeah, it's just, yeah, and and they feel kind of like they get like information or they're getting a bad test score and they're coming home just feeling so defeated. Yeah, yeah. And that's the thing, you know, the brain with its neuron is, neurons is capable of, of change. And so, it, you know, it can be rewired. And if you're constantly feeding yourself these negative stories, mm -hmm. those negative pathways will strengthen. When yeah. you're sort of putting more positivity in, the positive pathways will, will strengthen. And for me, fertility is a whole body event. It's not just something that happens in the fallopian tubes. Mm -hmm. All of your body systems are interconnected. So yes. these stresses that you have aren't just about stresses with emotions they're nutritional stressors there's yeah. the stress the sort of biological stress there's all sorts mm -hmm. of things that are going on that are affecting every single cell in your body and that's why again nutrition diet supplements yeah. alongside what you're doing are key yeah, absolutely. And I get excited about this other topic. You you had just talked about oxytocin. So yeah. Ina May had, had said, you know, I love this statement, the baby, the energy that gets the baby in gets the baby out. And I really think that that is oxytocin because I think that we've studied it and it's mostly studied for birth. But if yes. you think about it, it's kind of like a heart hormone. It's a love it is. hormone. It's the, it's the love hormone. It's a bonding hormone. And, you know, when you're trying for a baby, you start off, it's really exciting. Sex mm -hmm. is great. Yeah. Six months, seven months, eight months, your relationship starts to suffer. You get irritated with each other. You're sometimes not being kind to one another. And that closes off the heart. And yes. as you know, with acupuncture, the heart and the uterus are, are connected. Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I think about. So it opens the womb, you know, and, yeah. and it's also increases around ovulation. It increases after yes. orgasm. So it's just such an amazing thing. Like if you really connect with your partner and, and a lot of times I feel for these couples because it's very hard when you're under so much pressure to enjoy intimacy. Yeah. And women are very hard on themselves. They, they need to be gentler. Um, yeah. I think dealing with uncertainty is really difficult because all of us like certainty. Nobody likes True. uncertainty. So, you know, if you knew you were going to get pregnant in three months, you'd sail through. But yeah. not knowing is the hardest thing. Oh, absolutely. And it is really hard because you're kind of you, all you have to really to base now is what has happened in the past. So I always say like, don't really allow the past to predict your future because it doesn't necessarily yeah. happen that way. But at the time, that's all you really have to look at. Yeah. And you know, fertility, there are so many, it's not just black and white. There are so many shades of gray when it comes to it. And yeah. I hate some of the words. I never use the word infertile. I talk about Me too. I, I don't like that word. I really don't like it. And when yeah. a woman will say, I'll say, what's wrong? She said, oh, I've been told I'm infertile. And I feel very strongly that nobody can tell you whether you'll have a baby or whether you won't have a baby. You know, how many people have you seen over the years with low AMHs mm -hmm. and all of that that have gone yep. on to get pregnant, but they've lost all hope because yes. they've been told that they're infertile. Yes. Now, here's my question. Why do you think that is? Because you hear that a lot of times in the Western medicine. Is it 
mostly because they're trained that way. They're trained to look from a certain lens and they were well, afraid of getting false hope. Um, I don't know. I, you know, I, I know lots of IVF doctors that are, are brilliant, yeah. but I also see some that struggle with delivering bad news. And there's a way of delivering bad news that you can, you know, you can give hope about. And, you know, yeah. for me, I am the eternal optimist, but I'm also yeah. a realist. And yeah. so somebody comes and their AMH is low, that woman, regardless of whether she goes on to do egg donation or what, mm -hmm. wants to feel that she's ticking every single box. Yes. So while I wouldn't encourage her to do IVF because the percentage chance of it working is so low, mm -hmm. um, but she can do everything else to nurture the eggs that she's got, manage her yeah. stress, and within a timeline, if it doesn't work, then it's looking at plan B. And there are right. very realistic options now. Yeah, definitely. Without a doubt. I mean, there's a lot of different mm. uh, options, which is great. Technology is amazing in that sense. Yes. And there's always yeah. like, <laughs> yeah. So who would be a good candidate? Like if somebody comes in, wants to try naturally, at what point should they consider IVF? Well, I always look at two things. I look at the time they've been trying and I look at age. And um, it depends on a woman, when, whether she's just first met somebody at 39 and she wants to give it a couple of months, absolutely. Yeah. But there's a fine line between how long you try naturally at 38 or 39 before right. you move on to IVF. Um, everybody's different. You know, when they come in, um, not just looking at the medical side, but the emotional side, the diet, the nutrition, etc. So uh, looking at where you can make those in improvements. Yeah. Um, and again, just education around sex and the fertile window yeah. and debunking some of the myths around sex. I get them to try and focus on the sperm, not the egg. The egg's mm -hmm. 24 hours, it's random, whereas the sperm lasts three to five days. So if you're having enough um, sex in the lead up to ovulation, right. you know, you do, you do much better. So it's, a lot of it is educational. And also yeah. planning. Women love a plan of action about what they're going to do over the next couple of months. And, you know, very often it's like sort of saying, right, we're going to work with this. And then in, where are we now, March, if by September nothing's happened and they're still young and they can make all these changes, then they need to look at what plan B is. And, you know, you, you must see it. I mean, we see it in the clinic a lot where women will come along, um, have been trying for three years, book their IVF, and then, hey, presto, they're pregnant. So there has to be something yep. yeah, absolutely. in the mind. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. But the one thing you can't say to any woman that's trying for a baby, oh, relax, it will happen. Oh, totally. You know, <laughs> You're likely to punch you. You can't relax when you're trying for a baby. You're always searching for answers. Yeah, without a doubt. And it is um, and it is a hard thing to go through because yeah. you really don't know what's going to happen. You're kind of like in this up in, the, everything's up in the air. And you're going through all these different tests and it's it's not easy. No, it's not. It's not. And, you know, it's, it's quite interesting um, it's seeing the changes over, over the years and I've always been a believer in nutrition. I really do think it's the foundation to healthy eggs and sperm. But sometimes women are too restrictive in what they're, they're doing. Yeah. And I know that sort of like in Western medicine, very often a woman is, is told that you're born with all the eggs you're ever, ever, ever going to possess. There's nothing you can do to improve them. And I disagree with that because, you know, an egg has its cycle it goes through. But, you know, when you, when you think that the environment in which that egg is growing is susceptible to your diet, your nutrition, the supplements you're taking. And we know things like vitamin D um, are mm -hmm. really, really important for egg and sperm quality. Mm -hmm. um, and some tiny studies that have been done on vitamin D show that women with higher levels um, have got a better ch a, a chance of, of, of success. Mm -hmm. um, and we know if you're black, if you're Asian, or if you're living in, in Northern Hemisphere, you don't get enough vitamin D mm -hmm. in the winter. But we're equally seeing now, um, and one of the things I'm quite excited about, I've just brought out two products, FemSeve and MensSeve. I have to send them over to you or look online. And I'm a huge believer in the vaginal microbiome. You know, that mm -hmm. is becoming more and more um, prominent in terms of when you're going through IVF. Mm -hmm. um, which, and, you know, it's all about um, pro probiotics and getting a good environment. Um, and what's interesting 
about what I'm doing with HUG is, you know, the, the gut is considered the second brain. It holds 70% of our immune cells um, and our serotonin, you know, the hormone. But again, you know, the vagina has a very different environment. And by the, the studies that have been done have been done on lactobacillus to show that it can help improve implantation, which is just wonderful how oh, wow. a lot of these things are starting to come out. It's the same with... Um, inositol and PCOS. Mm -hmm. um, studies have been done in inositol to show it helps with regulating cycles. Mm -hmm. It's as good as metformin for, for PCOS in some women. So it's quite interesting that nutrients and nutrition and supplements are increasingly becoming um, part of mainstream. It is. And it's uh, interesting because when I got out of school, I studied Chinese medicine. I knew a lot about herbs. I didn't know much about supplements. And then yes. eventually when I worked with fertility, you really do need to know your supplements, not just because it's good to know, but it's also a lot of times people doing IVF cannot take herbs. So you have nothing else but yes, supplements. Yes, yes, yeah. I'm the opposite. I know nothing about Chinese herbs, but about vitamins and minerals. <laughs> Yeah, but they're huge. I mean, you could do so much with that because there are so many times I couldn't do uh, herbs. And yes, it's all yeah. about the supplements, but the supplements really do make a difference. And sometimes people feel like it's overwhelming to take the supplements, yes. but I explained to them that you just, in today's day with overproduction and over planting, you don't have the same nutrition in the soil as we used to. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And, you know, living a, a, a busy, fast life, you deplete your body of nutrients if you drink too much, if you eat processed foods. Yeah. Um, and, you know, those those nutrients are to make to make hormones. And it's it's interesting in my clinic. And I'm sure it's the same for you um, in the digestive profile that women fill out. So many of them have got irritable bowel, constipation, yeah. diarrhea, mm -hmm. and they've got poor gut health. And when you think about you need to from the food you eat that you um, ingest and absorb, that's making your eggs, your hormones, um, and, and the sperm. So absorption and digestion are really important. Right. And that's another thing is sometimes people have poor gut health and then they'll take lots of supplements and those supplements are not getting absorbed correctly. If they have yes, yeah. sensitivities, inflammation, it's just not coming in. Yeah. So yeah. it's a whole revamp. And sometimes it's hard because food and diet are so behavioral and they're so yes. primal for people that it is, it's a shift. And of yes. course you got to do it slowly and easy. Um, but one of the things that I always think about is after the IVF process is mm -hmm. because we are, you know, women are getting tons of hormones that are not naturally processed in the body. So it's way more than the body is ever used to one of the things that I find, you know, a lot of IVF clinics or a lot of people focus on is like leading up to the retrieval, leading up to the transfer. And of course, after the transfer, you can't do much as far as taking other supplements because yeah. most likely you're pregnant, hopefully. But for excess hormone release or maybe supporting the liver and supporting the colon yeah. and, and the detoxification, I feel like it's so important to focus yes. on as well after the retrieval. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Things like fiber, um, things that are going to sort of get um, things out of the body are, you know, are important to do. But yeah, I agree with you. Definitely. Definitely. Yeah. yeah Cause it's uh there's so many different factors for the whole. Um, now, as far as egg quality and sperm and, and when they come together and of course, hopefully have healthy embryos, what I find a lot of times is that men's sperm are not being focused on as much, or it takes a lot longer after dealing with fertility challenges to look at the sperm. And if they do look at the sperm, they're not looking necessarily at the DNA. They're looking at the count. They're looking at the shape yeah. and the, you know, morphology and motility. And so or do you guys at your clinic focus on DNA fragmentation? Because that is an yeah, important that, aspect. It's, it's, it, it, what's difficult about it, what's great about the vaginal microbiome is that you know that you need to take lactobacillus, that probiotic that will help. Specifically. For <laughs> I that, think the, yeah. difficult, the difficult thing with sperm 
is that some of these tests that are done on DNA fragmentation, mm -hmm. they're quite expensive to do and you have to retest. And mm -hmm. people can't come up with the answers about what men need to take. There's always a debate going on yeah. um, about vitamin C, vitamin E, um, omega-3. I think it's a good test to do. I think what's good about something like DNA fragmentation, if it is high, and you and you're doing IVF, not ICSI, um, you won't stand as good a chance. So if you know what that result is, it would lead you to try ICSI first because you stand a better chance of success than you would if you were just doing um, standard IVF. Got it. Um, yeah. And ICSI is a little more expensive, I'm sure, because yes. um, yeah. it's more detailed, specific. If people don't know what it is, it's uh, when they inject. Yeah it's, a higher, yeah, it's a higher fertilization rate as well. Yeah, there's so many different things. Um, there's so many different parts, you know, to this whole and lots of new technology as well. Yes, uh, is there anything yeah. new, like as far as add-ons or things that you're excited about? Because I know that you're you're in this world. <laughs> I know that I know that add-ons um, in the UK are um, this huge debate about what add-ons are and what what they do. And I think uh, mine's a private clinic, and I think sometimes it's easy to think that you're doing all these add-ons just for um, more money or whatever and that's not the case I mean mm -hmm. the whole thing about IVF it, it has to be appropriate to you and what's going on for you so mm -hmm. you know if you're older with fewer eggs you would have a much more gentler form of IVF mm -hmm. if you're you've got blocked tubes you would probably need very little um, stimulation especially if your egg reserves are good so you have to look at the person in front of you um, one of the um, things that th this quite there's quite a few things now like this embryo um, embryoscope so being able to not disturb the embryo and see see the embryo developing after you've had um, the transfer and um, also there is pre-genetic diagnosis which I'm sure you're doing over there as well where you're mm -hmm. able to look at cells so it has to be appropriate what the add-ons are depending on the situation that you that you're in and you had mentioned doing a gentler cycle if you have lower reserve. Yeah, I think, you know, if you're if you're older and your egg reserves are low, IVF isn't going to be conventional IVF isn't going to work because you've got so few eggs left. But sometimes there's a milder stimulation that you can do called natural IVF where you just get you know one egg but the success rate is 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 very very low so I think that women need to be counseled before they do any of this as to what is going to work for them and my other question is yeah I mean a lot of I hear different things about using really like a lot of or high dosage of medicine or hor hormones versus something that's a little more gentler in general Sometimes yeah. people say that you might get less eggs, but the quality might be better. What are yeah. your thoughts on yeah. that? No, I agree. I think that, you know, if, it, 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 like I said, it's got to be appropriate to you. So, you know, if somebody's got um, a good egg reserve, they're not going to need a lot of stimulation to get the eggs that you that you need and you don't want hundreds of eggs you want you, you know you want fewer because the side effects if somebody produces a lot of eggs such as hyperstimulation etc yes. so you know you, you're looking constantly at the person um, extra drugs are used if there's immune issues such mm -hmm. as prednisolone um, but again it all depends on whether it's female factor male factor both age underlying medical conditions um, etc yeah, for sure. And sometimes it could be tough the first time because yes. sometimes you don't know how the person is going to respond until they actually get the treatment. No, absolutely. Absolutely. But I, I do think, you know, I, I do think that the holistic side alongside conventional IVF is the, is the way to go. That's what women really, really do. Um, get a lot from they you know they enjoy it I don't know is it happening in the states have you got many clinics yes. that have great yeah it's amazing so, so I have um not everybody has an acupuncturist where where I am I think in California they're a little more progressive with that I think yes, they actually yeah. have uh, acupuncturists on board in certain clinics in the United States and then I have actually one woman who is a doctor, an IVF doctor, and one of my patients went to her and mentioned me, and she's been sending me people all the time. She's very open 
and she's yes, very which, aware right. of nutrition. She's aware of supplements and it's great. So she actually really sees it as a wonderful collaboration and helping. Yeah. It's really about helping the best, it is. you know, create the, the best board. circumstance for the patient. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. Yeah. And it's really nice to see. It's nice to see when people work together. And I send people to her too, because sometimes people need IVF. You, you get to a yes. point where they benefit from that for sure. Yeah, no, absolutely. And, and I think a lot of the younger doctors are very open to a lot of these therapies. Yeah, for sure. So are there any tips you can give to somebody who's just hearing and like wants to prepare their body? What are some of the things that people should at least think about on their own before really reaching out? Um, I think absolutely understanding your cycle, especially if you come off the pill and not to wait if you come off the pill to try straight away because you're likely to be more fertile. Mm -hmm. Um understanding when the fertile window is understanding you know that you need to have sex in the lead up to ovulation and don't yeah. stop after not put the pressure on one another i think that women are using far too many apps gadgets and gizmos there's nothing wrong with them to sort of get an understanding but you don't have to use them month in month out because it just pressure puts pressure on you as a as a couple um i think women tell their men far too many minute details about what's going on in their bodies now you know i'm in my 60s and uh, <laughs> never did and i think sometimes it can be off-putting with the bleep 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 of the thermometer as well every morning so you know just assessing where you are not to put too much pressure on you to really work on your mindset because if your mind isn't right you can't get motivated on anything you don't feel like you're in control of, of anything um, and just do the best you can you know don't limit everything in your life um, yeah and, and stop enjoying it and put your life on hold which is easier said than done I know it's wonderful words of wisdom. And I will say um, it's interesting how like on TV or movies, they make it seem like you have like a minute to try. <laughs> the yes, fertile yes. window is like a minute long. They're like, oh my God, my temperature, yeah. let's go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I yeah, think a lot yeah. of people really have that in their minds is like what the fertile window is. Yeah, but they need to focus on the sperm, not the egg. Yeah, yeah, totally. And that gives them some, that gives, that, that just takes the pressure off. Right, exactly. So leading up. And um, yeah, that's wonderful advice. And it's amazing to talk to you. And if people want to reach out, and I know that you have so much information, tons of books, supplements. Yeah, there's a lot on the website. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. so how can people find you? Well, the, um, Zeta, uh, ZetaWest.com um, mm -hmm. and all the products, visualizations, everything are on there. Um, yeah. And then, you know, Instagram, I've got a big Instagram following as, as you do. Um, and yeah, you can find anybody these days. <laughs> yes. And Zeta West <laughs> Clinic. And I have all of this information in the episode notes if anybody wants to find it. Zeta, it was such a pleasure to have you. I really you. admire you and you're Aww. really an amazing gift to the community. So thank you so Aww. much. Yeah. Thank you very much. And we'll stay in contact. So that concludes today's episode. You can find all of the links mentioned on the episode notes. If you're enjoying these episodes, please take a moment to share and leave a review. Reviews mean everything to podcasters, and I really enjoy hearing from my listeners. You can also find me on my website at www.thewholesomelotus.com or email me at info at thewholesomelotus.com. I love hearing from my listeners. If you're interested and want updates as well as a free ebook, on my top 10 fertility boosting habits, you can visit my fertility page on www.thewholesomelotus.com. I thank you so much for listening in and hope that you have a beautiful day.